Most red deer hunters dream of one day taking a truly massive trophy stag. A big double six, or even better, the holy grail of deer hunting, an imperial, a double seven. In reality, these monster stags are very few and far between under true free range conditions. However, better management of deer as a resource is starting to make the impossible possible. With me were two good mates, Craig Ross and Mick Gould. And as Craig was just getting over major knee surgery, we kept the pace as hard as we possibly could to keep him suffering. The harder you push Tex, the better he hunts. Under true free range conditions, big trophy stags can only exist in the thickest and the hardest country, unless, of course, a consistent approach to managing deer under quality principles has existed for many years. It's a superb three year old number five. As an example, this great young 10-pointer has all it takes to make a terrific trophy in years to come, as long as he's allowed to live that long. He can only kill a deer once. of roars and grunts, hind calls and brush rattling, I brought this three-year-old stag from 500 metres out across a gully to within 10 metres of the rock I was standing on. Without quality management, these young guys are simply too easy to kill. Lose them and you lose the trophy stags for years to come. In recent years, wild deer are being blamed for having a significant impact on native wildlife. And even if this were true, it would be insignificant compared to the impact that cats, foxes and wild dogs have on our marsupials. A species like the rock wallabies here are coming back quite well right through much of our red deer range due to the control measures put in place by recreational hunters and landowners on the real nasties. Wild deer, which bring an income back to landowners, are being used as the management tool to control the species that are having the impact on our native wildlife. Without wasting time, I headed way out into a distant scrub basin where I knew a good stag had been running for a few years. As we got there, 
it was clear a major battle was raging as at least four big stags fought for supremacy of the area. The hunt was on. We quickly made our way down towards the best roar, hoping for an opportunity before the swirling winds blew our chances. Slowly and steadily, we moved our way down through the thick grass and gum tree suckers, and in front of us, a big set of antlers appeared as this stag started to push his hinds up the hill in our direction. He is an absolute ripper. Craigie, that is an absolute monster, mate. What a beauty. What an absolute beauty. It's two. This is like, in the first two hours of the first bloody day, what are we going to find up in that back country? Yeah, well. Hard to get them much better than this, but that's that's good. Yeah, that's awesome. This is the most magnificent stag I've ever shot. So many thanks to Clark and Wild Country for taking us here up in the high hills to find this magnificent beast. And yep, back again next year. Yeah, it's it's beauty. <laughs> this is um, a dream come true for me as well. Again, it's not just one beast in this area. We've got every mature stag is coming out to something fantastic here. Uh, this is you know, over 10 years of real hard work. Let's go and have a go at this one shore down the side here for me. Right. Awesome. What we do tomorrow? Okay. <laughs> Let's go fishing, go catch a marlin. As I watched Craig carry out his massive 14 pointer, it was like looking into the past when my father and his mates were just lads and trophies like this were only taken in New Zealand. It goes to show what is possible in this country if you manage your herds. It was finally our chance to see the monster trophies appear. of our week wasn't so easy with countless miles walked from daylight to well into each night. Craig's knees starting to swell badly. It was up to Mick and I to keep walking the hills in search of one more top class trophy.
Finally, we saw an excellent stag moving quickly a couple of gullies across from us, so we circled hard around to one side to try for an ambush. We sure needed some luck at this stage, and it turned out to be good, really good. Just shot this stag, it's the first thing in the morning. We've been out here for five days hunting. We've just got him, we found him walking along a fence line. We're dodging some cattle. And we shot him from about 25, maybe 30 metres. He stood there. Clark spotted him. I stepped around him and we shot him. Yeah. How old do you think this stag is, Clark? Well, his front teeth are worn and his um, his eye teeth are worn. And looking back in his throat, he's, he's worn down. We'll have a check later on, but I'd say he is at least 10, that stag. He's not a big-bodied stag for that. But um, this is a you know, dinky-dyed, true blue Queensland double seven, mate. They don't get any better than that. That's fantastic. You're not wrong. You're not fantastic. Hunted hard. This is five days. You've walked about three miles. Just. Just three miles. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we've done we've done a lot of kilometres this time. It's just been incredible. No, this is the end of it. it was a really good hunt. Last day, last morning. We've done a lot of hard yards to get him. Hell of a lot of hard yards, but it's all been worth it in the end. What happy territory. Yeah. Oh, this is a fantastic stag. Absolutely magnificent. Free range. Old Queensland, double seven. Yeah. Really good. Clark says he's about 10 or 11 years old. Fantastic. Tune for much further than that, but a lot Check out, there's a lovely double six living down here with a mob of hinds. And uh, I'd seen this stag last year, took a photo of him last year, and hadn't seen him. And I reckon he'd been living up on this, this big top over here. And now the raw is just getting into full swing. He's uh, decided to come out and, and maybe challenge that young double six. But we'll pull his jawbone out later on. I think he's at least 10, just you're looking at his first permanent um, molar, and it's right down flat. So that looks like he's at least 10. He might even be 11 or 12 year old. So this okay. is a great example of a, uh, a true Queensland 14-pointer, double seven. He's no, come gone into an elite group of people who've taken double sevens in this country. No. Terrific. He's not a big-bodied stag. He's probably only around 130 kilos. Um, a lot of Queensland stags only like that. Small bays. We had small bays last year as well. So. Um, Excellent. Thanks worth very much, walk. Clark. No, well, well worth my pleasure, walk. mate. It's been a terrific hunt. Thank awesome. You. Anytime, you're, you're welcome back anytime. Poor genetics should never be confused with damage, as with this excellent young stag here. I filmed this guy as a spiker a few years before and he had a broken pedicle right down at the skull. We saw him every year in the same place and here he was again. With big growls coming out of the thick scrub edges, it took a lot of walking to keep our wind right, circling out wide and approaching each time from the best angle. After a lot of sweat and boot leather is burnt chasing stags, it often leads to exhausted hunters catching a few minutes of sleep at lunchtime.
From out of nowhere, this massive old stag circled in behind us and got our wind. We soon found out what he was so interested in in this gully. There was a hind here that looked like she may have been the centre of attention all night for him and other stags. She'd hidden away in this gully and bedded down out of sight. Now, most times, if you don't push these big old stags or spook their hinds, they will venture out to the scrub edges where you have a chance to catch a glimpse of them, usually at dark or right on daylight. As this was Pierre's first red deer hunt, Dennis took the time to show him tracks, wallow holes, rub trees and other examples of deer sign as we hunted in search of a big cull stag I'd seen here a few days before. A major part of quality management of a wild herd is the taking of large dominant breeding stags which display genetic characteristics lower than the standard you set. Let's go after that one. This was a massive big 4.5 or 9-pointer, which would be best out of the herd, but it would make a terrific trophy for Pierre for his first red deer hunt. With light rain falling and more predicted for the day, our time was quickly running out. As rain and mist started to roll across the hillsides, deer started to appear out in the more open country, and we were soon in action again. Results, top trophies, and the best mates to be around. Yeah. This is living, this is red stag hunting, 